it's electronic monitoring and what it does is for pre-trial only and this would be so that if someone needed a third party they would bring the private ent entity in that does electronic monitoring and there would be an agreement made between the, the judge and the, def the attorneys to say that you will be staying at a certain resident you will be working doing counseling treatment whatever provisions are, are made to that point and if you abide by all that you could come back if you're sentenced or, or found guilty because right now you're not guilty and you could utilize that time as part of your time served right now you have to be in jail or in a residential treatment center to be able to get credit well it really has to do with there's 40 percent that are in our jails right now that are pre-trial and so right now you, you're sitting there just waiting for trial there's not a lot of opportunity for treatment many have lost their jobs and then even found that they're not guilty this way they can keep their employment but they're also restricted and they're required to also get the treatment that that's necessary what i'm hoping is that that door doesn't keep revolving around and we end up having to build a new jail how do we reform how do we make it so that People don't just go out the door of the, of the jail and then come around in the next couple months. And to me it is, if you've lost your job and you've lost your family and all those, you're kind of, you know, in a crisis you fall down on the bottom and it's very hard to get back up. Where here, I think you should pay for what you did, but people make mistakes and can we provide opportunity instead of, you know, just ruining lives all over. The state spends about $600,000 a year. It's tough to nail down the figure exactly on printing annual reports for various agencies. And all told, there's, gosh, 100, give or take, reports that get published on usually an annual basis. Most of them go straight from the mail to the recycling. It costs a lot of money, they consume a lot of time to produce. And so um, we passed legislation that moved out of the House last week, I think it was, it basically creates a default so that all these reports are uh, produced electronically by default unless there's a compelling reason to print them. So it's a cost-saving measure, it saves time, and it kind of keeps us uh, au courant with the era. Even in the lounge, you know, I'd come in in the morning, the guys would, oh my goodness, you got the fingernail polish. And I said, give me two minutes. And as I started in, I got to tell you, the men got it. And basically, the uh, fact that uh, many of our manicurists have not been trained with the hygiene, the sanitation, and quite frankly, how to use the tools. They can really hurt people. That's where I really was able to bite off on this particular bill and say, this is the right thing to do. I mean, it's been gory. People have looked at it, okay, get it. So, you know, be, uh, infections, fingernails being, and quite frankly, fingernail beds that have been ruined where pe people's fingernails don't grow. So it really went farther than that. And, and uh, these Dremel tools or these electric tools, if they don't have the skills to be able to go off into your cuticle, ruin your cuticle, I mean, there's a lot more than I ever knew. And so we've all learned a lot through the process. And what the resolution does is it states our support for Senator Mikowski and Senator Sullivan's uh, taking the Antiquities Act and making, uh, instead of it being an executive order by the president, we'll have to go through congressional approval and have to have approval from the legislators uh, in the state where the, not, the monument designation is going to be. So a couple of the things that we worry about is we worry about ANWR being uh, put into national monument status um, from President Obama. Uh, there's other areas in, Br in Bristol Bay is another area that we're concerned will be put in national monument status. And when that happens, the Antiquities Act of 1906 requires that those lands be used for nothing at all. So there's no um, economic development from those lands. And more in particular for me, I went to Kivalina with Secretary Jewell and talked to her extensively about ANWR and opening up the Area 1002, which was designated as an oil and gas exploration area. Uh, she seemed to say that, um, indicated that President Obama was coming up here and not sure why he's coming up here. He's never in, you know, in his eight years as president come up. Uh, leads me to believe that he's talked a lot about n never having development in Anwar. So it does lead me to believe that there might be some, um, you know, thought of him coming up here and, and designated it as a national monument. And I think Senator Murkowski and Senator Sullivan are both concerned about that and that's why they, they introduced the legislation. For, uh, for me, and I think for the legislature, it's an economic opportunity that's going to be missed if we don't allow drilling on ANWR and on the Outer Continental Shelf. So both, both those things, and if we could drill in NPRA and have some oil coming from those reserves, I think it would, it would change our state.